We want to protect them and we can't protect them in spite of them protecting themselves. So in the late 1800s and early 20th century, hat pins were all the rage. Women have started their extremely long journey of basically just being recognized as a person with a vote. If you don't have a vote, your opinion and your safety is not your responsibility. It is your father's or your spouse. Um, and there's more on that in my article on Healthy Buffalo this week. But basically you had no rights. However, the world was changing towards the end of the 1800s and women were starting to walk around more. They were getting more into the workforce, maybe into college. It's after the Civil War, we're in reconstruction and they were traveling more unescorted by a man. Um, remember Laura Ingalls Wilder when she actually traveled like basically crossed a quarter of the United States by train and she had her three young daughters. So more women were working and more women were attending college and there were some men that just didn't like this. Apparently they felt it was their need to take these uppity women down a peg or two. And so what they would do is these creepers called mashers, and they could be anywhere from like your average Joe creeper on the street to a well-dressed gentleman that felt he just wanted to, hey you, you shouldn't be walking alone. It's just not the right thing to do. So what they would do is they would see these young women unescorted on a train or public transportation just walking down the street and he would basically make unwanted advances at her. Probably similar to the modern day cat call, but they would probably be taking a little bit more physical liberties with them, like sitting very close to them on the train, touching them. Then you had your more dangerous predators. They were the ones that were out there realizing, hey, you know what, there's a lot of women that you know, before they were all escorted and now crime pickings. What was a woman to do? This apparently. Women, you know, they weren't exactly carrying knives, and I guess they could have carried a gun. They could have carried a Derringer at the time. That was probably a more popular pistol. They really weren't armed because culturally they had been escorted by men. They were hindered by what they wore. If you look at the historical dress, they were wearing corsets, which would suck them in really tight. Think uh, Rose DeWitbicator from Titanic. That's kind of the era of the hat pin thing that we're looking at here. But these courses were made of whalebone, so it's not like you're gonna like bend in half. So physically they were restrained, breathing they were restrained. You're looking at a massive amount of skirting and petticoats and things like that. So even like running away is gonna be difficult. So I mean, there is just all sorts of things that would prevent them from even remotely being able to defend themselves in any capacity. Cut that out. So basically what they would do is they would take this and if a masher got too close to them on the train, they would do one of two things, either stick them in the thigh or stick them in the um, face. Ironically, I think that's really fun because not much has changed in terms of uh, self-defense in that regard. I mean, you go for the face, that's a psychological aspect of it. Most people don't like the idea of anything coming directly at them. Also, this could really kill somebody. You go know, right through the eyeball, right through the ear, and pretty sure that there's like a Alexander DeMoss book where he talks about a woman killing somebody with a hat pin. So anyway, they would uh, very quickly, and it was vast and effective, you just pop this uh, out of their hair. I just stab myself in the head. Ow! Okay, so we'll pretend I have a hat on. Guy sidles up close, and it's like, oh, <laughs> stabs him. So here's the best part of all this. Instead of punishing the men and putting forth an effort to make the streets safe for women because times were changing, they decided that that wasn't the right course of action. So the right course of action was to take away the women's weapons. I mean, they had their reasons, right, of why they would do this. I mean, they had to be good ones if they were basically gonna take away such a simple tool. It's not like we had mace then, although I would say this is Pretty darn as effective in my opinion, but we're gonna show you that here in a little bit. So here's the arguments against hat pins. And uh, let me give you a hint, they aren't good. And there's not many of them. Reason number one, they could be a danger to innocent men. Yeah, I mean, they had a few accidental situations where her hat pin accidentally like stabbed a guy right here and because it was maybe rusty or something like that. The guy ended up with possibly lockjaw and he died. 
not really sure about that one. There was instances where maybe uh, the woman was a little bit too tense. I wonder why. She's walking on the street alone and, you know, she's read all these things about mashers and, oh my gosh, there's a guy coming up behind me. She turns around and, she, you know, maybe it was a guy who bumped into her on the train and she stabs him. Okay, big deal. It's funny here how the logic is, is now it's the men that are in danger and we must do something about it by taking away the women's weapon. We want to protect them and we can't protect them in spite of them protecting themselves. So reason number two, what they were wearing. Seriously, this argument is like really, 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 really old. It's not just getting old, it is really old. I actually recently wrote an article about how it wasn't until the 90s in Italy where if a woman was wearing jeans and she accused someone of rape, that they would dismiss her case because her jeans were too hard to get off and so she must have obviously helped them remove the jeans so therefore it couldn't be rape. Funny how this argument doesn't really hold up here because women would have been wearing layers of petticoats and skirts and pantaloons and heaven knows what else, but you know, she asked for it. So the Chicago ordinance in 1910 actually voted 62 to two in favor of limiting the size and how women wore these little puppies. And apparently being physically beat down or touched unwantedly was not enough of a reason to stick someone through the pupil with one of these in order to defend themselves. And of course, you know, they were asking for it because, you know, they didn't have an escort and they were wearing scandalous attire that would show an ankle. Actually, that's not necessarily true. Not entirely. There was one guy that spoke at the council and that he just didn't want women armed, period. And what he said was, if women want to wear carrots or roosters on their heads, that is a matter of their own accord. But when it comes to wearing swords, they must be stopped. How liberating. No, but really, this guy's like hashtag compensating for something. The ordinance stated that if a woman wore a hat pin longer than nine inches, they would be arrested and fined $50, which is like a lot of money then. This one here is 10 inches, so I would have gone to jail. Such a rebel. The best part about all of this is that this happened 10 years before women had the vote. Yep, all men on that council that voted that women had no right to fend off someone forcing their way into their space, unwanted touch, possible rape, murder, yeah. So side note to the Chicago ordinance is that several other large cities followed suit and then they finally get the vote and then we get into prohibition. So you can't fight back and now you can't drink. Realizing the need for safety, some women like Mademoiselle Gala wrote women's self-defense pamphlets. In fact, there were several women who promoted Japanese jujitsu as a means to combat the issue, they wanted women trained to deal with this. So there are some historical pamphlets from like the 1860s going forth. Mademoiselle Gala's pamphlet that she wrote was in 1903, and it has several very simplistic moves for women in order to be able to defend themselves. Pierre Vigny was a famous Parisian swordsman in the early 1900s. His wife, who apparently has no first name, on the internet, so she only goes by Miss Sanderson, used his sword concepts and adapted it for women with the use of the parasol. Four women in 1901 were attacked on a bridge in Pennsylvania. One yelled at them to use their at pins and they were able to successfully fend off the two men. In one such instance, a woman named Rosa Wilson used her hat pin to stab a man in the leg while he kept rubbing his up against hers. One woman named Sadie Williams in 1898, she fended off a robbery and attack on a streetcar where the two men were attacking the conductor. And so she took her hat pin and like stabbed the guy that was fighting the conductor in the back and he reared back. And so she stabbed him again in the chest and uh, he ran off and another guy grabbed her arm. She drove the hat pin straight into his face and he passed out. Once done saving the day, she turned and looked around and then she passed out as well. I'm gonna go with the fact that it's probably from lack of oxygen of fighting in a corset. 
A corset definitely changes how things are handled, which is why I'm going to test out today. Ironically, my husband and I were Sherlock Holmes and Irene Adler for Halloween one year, and so I have the costume. I'm not LARPing, although that's totally okay if you do that. That's completely fine. I have some uh, weird hobbies as well. So what we're gonna be doing is taking some of these Victorian women's self-defense techniques that I've found, and we're gonna test them out. Long skirts, corsets, armed with a hat pin that is apparently too dangerous for innocent men, and in some cases, I would have a parasol or an umbrella. He hates this fight like a mother. I need one that says fight like a Victorian. What's tight. Like tennis shoes, Ryan. These are leggings, not my underwear. Suck it in. <gasps> okay. Down my waist though. Okay, so this is uh, what's left of my Irene Adler costume from seven years ago. So I've lost the jacket somewhere and it's also being held together with a safety pin and a prayer in the back but this is about as close as i can get i also have the corset on and i i can't breathe at all it's brutal and in fact i'm pretty sure that if i bend over i'm gonna be moving some internal organs i'm using my husband he's gonna come and be my masher bad guy creeper so basically what we're going to be doing is trying some Victorian self-defense techniques by Mademoiselle Gala and a couple of ones with an umbrella or what they would have called a parasol at the time. Her name is Miss Sanderson, so she does some parasol women's self-defense techniques that we're going to be trying out as well as the hat pin slash knitting needle. We're going to be sitting on a train sort of situation or public transportation. So this could be a streetcar. You're gonna be sitting next to me. Since I don't wanna kill my husband, I'm gonna be using this uh, knitting needle, but ironically, this will probably scare him even more. Because I'm pretty sure he still has PTSD of a knitting needle through his foot. But our first year of marriage, I basically like had to shoe him like a horse. To remove a knitting needle from his foot so yeah so we're gonna be using this wooden knitting needle because I don't want to poke through his brain if I was to be my gosh I can't breathe you see my, my hand do this. so if I'm sitting on public transportation and a rude guy comes up and he's just gonna be he wouldn't be walking like that he's not a thug Ryan good heavens he would be sitting way too close you know what this is ridiculously way too easy all I have to do even if I'm like trying to be fast okay so you're like sidling up to me I like how you're all protected in the face I don't blame you so the idea is just this which is this is really stupidly easy this is a great a plus on the hat pin idea here or if I really want I mean if I just want to kill you it'd be like this hey like this thing's Really, this requires absolutely. What if it were on the other side? Like oh, left yeah, but okay, I'll be left handed. Minimal training for none of this. I'm not being a very good masher. Hey. Like, <laughs> Don't cup. Alright, no cup. I think they'd probably be a little bit more dainty than I would be with this, so. I was to be sitting here and I'd be like this. Maybe hey, like, you know it's the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's an A plus on the hat pin. Okay, so some of these are if they were accosted in the street. First one we would have saw on a drawing would have been something as if she were to grab the arm and they were to break it. Okay, but I guess in this case if they were coming up at her from behind, I mean she could just grab the hat pin and stick him in the throat. And then he'd be breathing about as well as I'm breathing right now in this corset. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to be a bad guy and you're going to come up and I'm going to do, I'm going to break your arm, right? I'm going to break okay. your arm. Okay. Here we go. So I'm coming up. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you liar. Here we go. <laughs> just kidding. That was number two. Really, I just wanted to see if I could do that in a corset because man, it took everything I can. Okay, so. Ideally, I guess, if they had grabbed him, I'm not going to throw you again, I swear. Uh-huh. They said that the move would be here, turn the arm over, break the arm. Which, that would work, right? Yeah, I mean, you grab him. I don't know how tall they are. I don't know, here, here. 
Would that have snapped? That would suck. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had my original parasol over there, but then it didn't have a loop on it, so we're going to try for this one. It looks like some, I don't know, I took it out of my mom's shop. Hopefully we don't break it. The first one she showed was you could just hit them in the sternum right there. Again, with the not breathing thing. Very effective in my yeah. opinion. Anything there? Uh, a little bit better. <laughs> the other one that they showed too was she turns around and she hooks them by the neck and you're you're really just going with it. You're gonna have to let me fight for it a little bit, okay? I'm not a helpless Victorian woman, Ryan. Mm. You leave me alone, hook me to that. Did that work? Yeah, it's fine. Oh, good. It's that was the idea, good. was the hook to the knee. Also, keep in mind too, like I can move, I think I tore my skirt. I can move my legs to about here what did you call that? Your mother always said to it's tell a lady. Down south, honey. <laughs> that was the polite way, apparently, in the south. If you could see a woman slip. The one with the hook to the neck requires a little bit more finesse. She would have to not be carrying her parasol this way. She'd have to bring it up and then sling it around and hook and knee. Um, I mean, it would work, but it would require, I would think, a little bit more training that, you know, they were probably likely allowed to do in the first place. So. What about like the groin? Mm, there we go. You know? Yeah, there's a big one. Hey, that is a I'm good one. I'm not wearing a coat, by the way. You can't hear him. He uh, is muffled by the protecting himself from the hat pin. But um, he said, what about the groin? You know, if you were standing there, you could just step back and just go wham right there. He's wearing a cup, so you should be wearing a cup I for should. this. this is my Especially first for time. this next one that we're getting ready to do. Oh, so. <laughs> and then run as fast as you can without inhaling deeply because you're restricted. Okay, so what I do want to try is an attack from behind. And basically, I want to assume that I am not paying any attention to my surroundings. I'm not gonna have the hat pin, Ooh. no umbrella, limited movement, barely breathing in a corset. Basically, you know, exactly how they felt women should be to keep them safe. Oh, I've got nothing. So this one's gonna be realistic. So I guess you're walking up from behind in a fast manner to whatever your bad guy mind is doing, okay? So if I'm walking on the street and I just want to be able to get out of it, so go. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> so I think with this one we're going to try it a little bit different than that last one and we're going to see what I can do because in that when he had grabbed me from behind I did try and stomp on his foot and but I can't get enough movement I don't think in this skirt so we want to try something as if he's trying to get me to the ground in that very unwanted position in this get up and see if I can actually get out of it. You have to seek out so that I don't know when it's happening. So um, if I were to stand here. <sighs> you to cut me out of this corset. I'm just kidding. Don't mess it up. Like, safe to take this off? Sure. Mm. So are you worried about the knitting needle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with that last one, I have thoroughly destroyed... I don't even know where my, look, my belt loop is clear. <laughs> I have thoroughly destroyed my costume. If the uh, night of Halloween debauchery seven years ago wasn't enough. We have uh, finished it off with Victorian self-defense. So with that last one, did I get you anywhere where it hurt? Yeah, a couple places. 
Uh, one was the groin, which happened when we went to the ground and you rolled over. And then when you started kicking, like I, got, I took one of the bicep and like one of the forearm, and that sucks his boots. I don't know what type of shoes they would have worn back then, but. Um, I think they had like small little kitten heels. I don't know. I'll have to look that gotcha. one up. But and then the eyes, but and then I had the, the eyes. protective gear. So. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan of the eyes. Yeah, that one would have sucked. Always, always, always go for the eyes. Eyes, eyes, eyes. Knitting needle. Throat, thankfully. You didn't go for throat, the throat. I didn't go for the throat. Hey, no. Hat pin, eyes. Mm -hmm. All in all, the hat pin, I think, is probably the best thing that those women could have used back then in order to defend themselves. That's insane that they would uh, tell them that. You can't have one. Sorry, you can't have one. Or you got to put a little cap on it right here so that we can't stab all you innocent men there. I mean, look, like, look at it. That's a weapon. <laughs> it really is. I'm going to start wearing one of these. But seriously, this is like almost, if not more, effective than mace as a weapon in terms of easy to use. Does it require a lot of effort in training? As far as the corsets go, no. Like, that's super not conducive to maneuvering and getting a bad guy man off of... Off of... Uh, or sitting up. Me. Or even breathing. sitting up. It doesn't help with my posture either. Look at this thing. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching that whole video. Some of that was a complete cluster, but it did bring to light a lot of good things in terms of, um, you know, the hat pins being useful for, you know, going at the face. Um, in that scuffle, if you noticed, I'm a very big fan of the eye shot. Uh, it's eyes, 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 eyes. You know, we're not going to be able to be always carrying this hat pin around. Uh, one of the best quotes I ever heard was that nobody has muscular eyes. Definitely be aiming as far into those as much as you can. Um, the biggest, biggest, biggest aspect of it is just to fight. Just fight, no matter what. In any of those situations, keep moving. It wasn't easy to do it in a corset, and it's definitely not easy when you're in restricted movement. Uh, that's basically all I have for you all today. So, um, thank you all for watching. Have a good afternoon. Bye.